Hi folks, welcome to Duck Chronicles episode 5 as we follow the Brothers Green here uh, into the morning bath area for today. And if you notice, they're not quite as pretty as they were and that's because everybody molted this summer and that's just common for ducks. And everybody's colors are just starting to come back in. Uh, you can see right there, <laughs> gray pencil neck as we call her. She uh, She's starting to turn white and if we, I don't know if any of them are over here, but you'll start to notice some of our Cayugas uh, as their feathers come back from their molt are getting a lot more white on them. And Cayuga ducks that start out that beautiful black with the sheen on them, uh, over about five years turn almost solid white. Uh, many of them do anyway. We're starting to see the first of that with some of ours, including the, uh, the runners that are black runners that are probably got Cayuga blood in them. Yeah, let's see if that'll keep going over there for you. You see that? That uh, piece of sorghum doing that right there? I guarantee you there's a goose over there. That's Buddy and Joe. What they like to do is this sorghum gets nice big fat seed heads on it. There's clearly a male that was supposed to be a female right there. But when the sorghum gets big, there, there they go. Probably hard with the sun. I'll see if I can get over there without disturbing them. Got to move this water anyway. So it is bath time. There's Joe. He's right through there. And what they're doing is they're trying to bulldoze down that sorghum stalk because they know full well what's on top of it. So we'll give them a helping hand here. Buddy! Yep, they took off. They'll be back. Uh, but they're trying to bulldoze down that sorghum to get to the seed heads on the top. And, uh, not having a lot of luck today because that's a pretty thick stalk right there. But every once in a while I feel bad for them and I'll go ahead and cut a stalk off. And what I'll do actually is I learned, you can see this is right here where it's happened a couple years ago, that if you cut the sorghum stalks off low, they kind of cop us back out and put a second set of seed heads on them. Anyway, uh, what I want to show you today is just, you know, all the white ducks that were from season one that were babies, they're all grown up now. They're actually earning their keep, they're laying eggs for us. Um, we're getting around five dozen eggs a day close to right now. And uh, I think a lot of the girls that went in through a molt are just starting to really come back and produce. So if it wasn't for these guys, we'd have had a hard time making it. We got a lot of new customers and uh, they helped us get through that kind of lean time when everybody else went and uh, molted. I don't see the mallards. Uh, we call the mini brothers green. They're not over here right now. We named the girl mini brown. Little brown. There's little brown right there. Little brown and the mini brother green. So those are mallards. Those are the ones that you saw last year fly. There's the other mallard. And you see they're just coming into full color too, but they actually look a little better than the brothers green because they didn't molt because they're babies this year. Uh, the food forest has had ups and downs this year. As you can see, it's, it's really quite impressive, the stuff that has made it. We had a tough summer. Uh, a lot of you guys wanted Duck Chronicles during the summer, and basically I spent all summer just trying to keep things alive. We got all that rain in May here in North Texas as I ended the season. We got 27 days in a row of rain over a half of an inch every day. We turned the whole place into a swamp. And people said, well, you got all the water you need, your rain problems are over. No. What, uh, what happened next was through the summer, we got about three rain events for, for, for almost four months. Now, we've had, yeah, three real rain events in four months. And these, when I say events, I mean quarter inch, half inch type rain. We haven't had an inch of rain in a single event this summer. And we've gone 40 days straight without any rain. Uh, right now, everything is bone dry. We got a little bit of rain, I think it was like a tenth of an inch last week. And when the ground's this dry, it just doesn't last. Let's move over here. Anyway guys, we've got a workshop coming up and I want to take you elsewhere now and show you what we're going to be doing. When we moved on this property, I got really excited and I went into doing large scale production like these swales. There's one of the little locusts we planted this year just real quick before we move on so this this tree was a seedling about that high when we put it in the ground and there's gonna be a lot more of these going in you see the leaf structure on them they're just great for dappled shade we're gonna try to get shade on the back side of all these swales this 
this fall planted so in the spring it's there and uh, help keep them from drying out as quick as they do and stop some erosion problems. Got a gate here, ducks are on the front pasture right now. And uh, the truth is we should have put a lot more effort into this little area right here when we first moved in, but you get excited, you want to do big things. There's that little uh, dwarf mulberry. You can see how dwarf it is now. But we should have sheet mulched everything in here. We should have focused on the garden and the garden's doing okay. Um, but we should have sheet mulched from here to here and we should have focused on this, you know, and maybe a garden there and maybe that little orchard there for the first year. And uh, got those things absolutely locked down tight. But you know, I want to experiment. So I went, you know, broad scale fast and that's cost us losses. You can see we uh, have given up on cherry trees. That one's actually resurrecting. That one's dead. We killed a lot of cherry trees here. The ones that made it, made it. These trees through here are all doing really good. Um, we'll sorg them right there. I wanted to show you this. For those of you planting goji berries, so you don't freak out when it happens to you. See that? Little berries. Well, these fruited this spring, and then they looked like they just died on me. And uh, about three weeks ago, I looked at them. I said, they're coming back. And a week after that, I said, those things are going to fruit. And I guess they get two crops a year, and I guess they go dormant in summer, and that's how they survive desert environments. They just go dormant in the heat of the summer. So if that happens to your gojis, don't freak out. I'll show you this little project here, and we'll take a look at the quail and ducks and wrap up for the day. This is going to be the type of thing I'm talking about. This is what we should have started with, highly intensive uh, systems. This is going to be one of the projects we're completing for the uh, workshop next week with our students. These are going to be... Uh, wicking beds. They're going to be filled with seven inches of gravel, which is right where that pipe goes across, and then it'll be good quality uh, potting soil all the way to the top. And uh, that little area right there will be very, very highly productive. It's going to back, be back here where it gets a little bit of shade and plenty of sun at the same time. And those uh, two by fours, this is all going to be faced with concrete facing board and painted to look really nice. But the purpose is when that sun comes up, from right there in the sky all the way to there, all this beautiful shade goes away and this thing gets hit hard. And it, you know, it needs some sun, so that's good, but that heats up that soil. So by putting that facing board in there, we will always have shade on the soil, 100% of the time. Uh, and another thing that's going on, my handyman's coming today to do this work for me. See that lattice? There's three eight foot pieces of lattice and they are gonna go up on that wall. So we'll have one planting surface this way and then verticals going up on the back side. So it'll be a very, very intensive, very productive system. And uh, this is the kind of thing we should have done, you know, instead of planting hundreds of trees the, the first couple months we moved in. But again, we wanted to experiment and we've learned a lot. And boy, there'll be a lot of lessons that you guys will be learning as we uh, get things cleaned up around here into the fall with chop and drop little orchard down there. Almost everything made it except a couple apple trees that I brought in this year that I think brought blight onto my property. Uh, they came from Lowe's. That's the last time I'm buying trees from Lowe's. I'm sorry. It's just there was never a blight on this property until that happened. I know the rain hurt it, but um, it was the, every tree that came in got it, and then a few of my other trees got it and need to be pruned out. So the baby ducks, this is Thursday. So they've been with me one week, and they're three days older than that, so they're 10 days old right now. And they are just quite happy out here. Um, I've had zero losses with my ultra-low brooding. Nobody's, uh, nobody's gone down since they've come out here. Uh, I do have to fill these water things for them several times a day. And the quail, well, the quail are just as happy as can be. We've lost zero quail. So again, my ultra low brooding thing, I think is something that isn't for everybody, but don't believe people because when they just tell you it has to be, there, there's always ways to figure out how to do things better. And these guys technically should be in a box in the house under heat lamps, 24 hours a day for another week. And these guys should be in there for another week and a half. And I think you can see everybody's doing better out here. And again, the feed use is much lower than it is in the brooder because they're taking so much from the land. 
And a little side benefit, that heat lamp I give these guys at night, and I do turn that on at night for them. I take that tarp and I cover half of the, uh, the thing for them, and bugs just swarm in there. And I come out here at night, and they are just gorging themselves on bugs. So everybody's looking good and moving. It's been no problem. Uh, last time I showed it to you, they were way over there. I've moved them over to here. And that hardware cloth on the bottom, they do eat right through the bottom. So everything's looking good, guys. Um, I'm excited to be back in the fall. Let's go say hi to the Muscovies since you haven't seen them since last season either. They tend to spend more time over here than out and about. They like to kind of stay home. They're a little angry right now because they really like to sleep under there. And since they're on the front pasture, they can't get there. But you can see we've had a lot of young Muscovies. These are all new birds right here. Uh, that one right there, that one right there, that one right there, young birds. Uh, no, no, some more Muscovies, brand new Muscovies. And uh, they're pretty happy. Rosa Ragoose is coming in. We'll catch up with you in the next episode. Oh, wait, real quick, there we go. This is what I was talking about. These Cayugas, as black as they are, that girl right there was black as midnight in her first year and a half. And you can see that salt and pepper coming in on her. Old age at two just doesn't seem right, does it, girl? But uh, it's just a metamorphosis they go through. Catch up with you later.